This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. And we begin with breaking news at noon from Capitol Hill. Possible movement in the race to find a House Speaker. Congressman Jim Jordan is reportedly backing a resolution that would empower the Speaker pro tempore to open session. Jordan says he will continue to shore up support for his Speaker bid. The Ohio Republican has already failed on two ballots to get the 217 votes he needs to win the gavel. Opponents say he's too extreme to run the House. As of right now, it's unclear if a vote to empower Patrick McHenry will pass the House floor. All right, it is another spring-like day, much warmer than the average late October day. Here's a live look outside. Sunshine, warm temperatures. Thanks so much for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. It's the time of year we're supposed to be feeling an autumn chill, but temperatures are in the upper 60s. Let's go to meteorologist Tracy Hinson. She's here with the Weather First forecast. Yes, Kay, and what we're looking at today is a mix of clouds, a little bit of clearing out there as well. This view is a little daunting from the arch, but it's really not too showery outside right now. Temperature-wise, it is in the mid-60s. Uh, humidity is higher than yesterday. That's no surprise after a little bit of rainfall, so that should help some of us along today. Winds out of the west-northwest are just at about 12 miles per hour. Through the rest of our day today in St. Louis, we will make it up only into the mid-60s, so a little cooler, more fall-like today. And then after sunset, we'll quickly fall down into the 50s as we look at a mix of clouds and clearing. Now, we could have a few showers through the day today, very light, very minimal, and mostly for our uh, counties in Illinois. Now, let's go over what we're looking at for overnight tonight. Winds out of the west at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperatures will dip down into the low 50s. Now, that's for the city. So, if you live a little further out of town, I expect you to drop into the upper 40s. Our sunset is tonight at 618. I'm Travis Cummings reporting in University City where today residents can breathe much more freely after weeks of foul smells and fly infestation here at the Seafood City supermarket that's now shut down. And you can see behind me there's a dumpster with stuff just piled up. It's closed. On Tuesday, they had barriers up to prevent people from coming onto the parking lot. U City officials told us things would be clear later this week, so this may signal that the cleanup is finished. Officials were hoping to have it wrapped up on Tuesday, but that didn't happen. Now, this has been a massive project for weeks. Crews from Bio One St. Louis have been clearing out tons of rotting seafood and produce from inside Seafood City Market. The store was ordered to shut down in late March after the health department said products were improperly stored. Officials then had to block off the parking lot to keep people from stealing products tossed in the dumpster. Nearby neighbors have been complaining about the foul odor and infestation of flies. They say they're glad to breathe fresh air again. So relieved. I'm glad because I don't want to smell it anymore. And over time, I started smelling it every day mostly in the evenings, and it just got progressively worse. The building's owner is suing Seafood City for more than $300,000 in back rent. That trial date is set for October 23rd at 9 a.m. in St. Louis County. Reporting in University City, Travis Cummings, Five on Your Side. New at noon, a dog rescue operation in Douglas County, Missouri. The Humane Society in St. Louis is now caring for 43 dogs found yesterday on a property of a former commercial breeder. It says crews found the animals starving and suffering from various injuries. They also found nine dead dogs on the property. There's no timeline on when those dogs will be available for adoption. We're trying to learn more about why the Baldwin police chief is on paid administrative leave. The city's board of aldermen voted unanimously in a closed meeting last week to place Douglas Schaeffler on leave until further notice. City leaders aren't commenting on why they made the move, only saying it's a personnel matter. The St. Louis County Prosecutor's Office now reviewing a case of illegal grave digging in Berkeley. In August, we showed you cell phone video of two men digging up a grave at Washington Park Cemetery. Investigators say the men told them they wanted to move a relative's body to another cemetery. Police arrested them for illegally exhuming a body. Developing today in St. Louis, police looking for the person who shot a 21-year-old woman and a 17-year-old boy. It happened overnight while they sat in a car at 10th and O'Fallon. Police say the woman drove to a nearby gas station to get help. The victims are expected to survive. A football coach shot during a practice 
is now out of the hospital. Police say Daryl Clemens shot Shaquille Lattimore during a football practice at Sherman Park last week. Clemens is now facing charges of assault and armed criminal action. Meanwhile, the city has suspended the team from the City Rec Legends Football League. The city's recreation division says the decision was made after a series of incidents perpetrated by adults, which culminated in Tuesday's shooting. Now to the latest on the war in the Middle East. President Biden returned to the U.S. overnight after a trip to Israel where he offered steadfast support to Israel, to Israel and announced a deal with Egypt to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. NBC's Jay Gray reports from Tel Aviv. Well, hey there, it was a short visit, but made an impact. You can see in the headlines here what this says is Biden dictates rules of the game. And specifically, uh, that has to do with humanitarian aid. The White House said that that was a big part of his mission during his short trip. And just as he left, Israel and Egypt announcing that they will allow humanitarian aid to cross the border at Rafah, the Gaza-Egypt border. It didn't start today, but they expect it could tomorrow. Right now, repairing uh, some of the roadways that were damaged by Israeli airstrikes uh, during this war. And then the trucks will begin to roll. 20 semis will be a part of this first delivery of food water and medicine. Something is desperately needed uh, for two million or more caught in the crossfire. The civilians in Gaza right now with nowhere to go. They continue to stack at that border as well. Foreign nationals, uh, the Secretary of State says there as many as 600 uh, American foreign nationals in Gaza right now and they continue to find a diplomatic way to get some of those people going the other way across that border. All of this while at the border with Lebanon the fighting is intensifying. There's a big concern that this could spread and eventually become another front in this war. We know today that any tank missiles were launched by Hezbollah fighters uh, along that border into a kibbutz near the security fence there and the IDF uh, retaliating uh, with artillery fire. And this is something that's been escalating over the last several days with Israel moving more equipment, more troops into that region. So that's something that is being watched very closely as protests, thousands have been spilling into the streets. Clearly, the frustration here, uh, the tension is ramping up, and, and it's a, a very big concern, again, that this could spread uh, across the region. That's the very latest right now here in Tel Aviv. I'm Jay Gray, NBC News. And tonight, President Biden will deliver a primetime foreign policy speech from the Oval Office. The White House says he'll address the administration's response to the Hamas attacks against Israel and Russia's war in Ukraine. You can watch it all tonight at 7 p.m. right here on Five on Your Side. Still ahead, it's good to get that extra few minutes of sleep. The health benefits of hitting the snooze button every morning. Plus, why you'll see a lot of purple in St. Louis tonight.